morning, and shalom, St. Matthews, and all our friends and guests. I know, I'm looking at you. You're surprised to see me up here. Well, trust me, I'm the most surprised person in this room. <laughs> when Daniel called and asked me to speak, I was sure he meant just the mission moment. So I said, of course, I can do that. I mean, come on, how hard can that be? Give me a topic. I can rally anybody to stewardship. So he said, let's meet. So we did, and uh, surprise upon surprises, uh, he didn't mean the mission moment. He wanted me to give the sermon. Oh, OK, I think I can do that. He said, I know you can do that. Um, and it's going to be on 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 through 15. He gave me a copy of that. Oh, and our friends from the Jewish community are going to be there, but no pressure. Uh, I know you'll do just fine, and if you have any questions regarding the scripture, just call myself or Chelsea. I know you'll be great, right? See? At that point, I just want you to know my eyes crossed. I know more was said, blah, 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 because I have notes. I did take them, and uh, let's be honest, shock kind of set in, and when I left that office, I believe I panicked. So I went to the source I knew who would help me, besides Daniel and Chelsea, mind you. I mean, I couldn't admit to them I didn't really feel comfortable in this, because I already said yes. So I went and talked to who? Jen, you know, the one who went to seminary. And I said to her, I, I have this mission now. I have to give a sermon. And she looked at me and said, Phew. Mom, you can do this, come on. And I thought, oh, okay. And that was her help. So, <laughs> feeling much better, I went to the font of all biblical knowledge. No, not these two. Not even Isaac. Google, Google. that's right. <laughs> I went to the internet. I wanted to know what were the conditions surrounding the writing of the letter. And in the first letter to the Corinthians, Paul encouraged all the Christian communities to contribute to an offering to provide relief to the Christians in Jerusalem who were experiencing a drought-caused famine. Well, in this letter, Paul states a principle that is obvious to any farmer or gardener. The person who measures seed too sparingly will likely go hungry when winter comes. That is to say, stingy people in the end will pay a penalty for their miserly behavior. That principle holds in many realms. Think about the employee who watches the clock and gives only minimum effort. That person is not likely to be promoted. Or, as captured in the song from the 70s, that's my era, the 70s, Cats in a Cradle by Harry Chapin, Parents who have no time for their children when they are young are likely to find that their children have no time for them once they have grown up and left home. Yet Paul's advice continues. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Here is the reverse principle of what he was just talking about, that a person who gives generously will likely receive generosity in return. In the verses that follow, Paul speaks of God's generosity and God's inclination to bless those who are generous to others. Paul also writes this most important verse. Each of you should give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So how does this verse apply to us today? I believe that God does want us to be a cheerful giver, to give what we can joyfully, to do the things that are right for us to be a more active member of this faith community. But does that always mean giving more and more money to the church? Many have financial constraints on them that do not allow them to continue to give more every year. And no one would expect anyone to go without because one felt 
obligated to give more. No, this reading is not about giving the church anything out of duty or as a requirement. This is about giving freely and joyfully, and to give those things, as George Huffman said last week, that are right for you to share your love as a member of your chosen faith community. There are so many ways to give back. After all, we have more than treasure to give. Some of us have time, and we can cheerfully help on Sunday morning by praying and worshiping as you are here today and to lift up the joys and concerns of the church community. How about giving some support to that child care staff? Maybe once a month volunteer to help in the nursery or the preschool, pray school. Or what about acting as an usher or a reader? Or we now have adult acolytes. There's more. Maybe you should consider the talent category. Are you willing to share your talent by singing in the choir or with spirit move? How about playing in the bell choir? You could also be a substitute for one of them. The theater troupe always needs help, some of which does not involve singing and dancing. You can talk to Chuck and I about that. And, oh, you have no musical talent? How about working with the Altar Guild to make this altar a beautiful place? Or some of you, I'm sure, consider yourselves chefs. I'm not a chef. I gave that to my husband. Next, the next 25 years, he cooks. So if you do cook at all, maybe you would consider making something for the meals ministry or maybe you would deliver the food joyfully. And if you're looking for very short-term work, work with VBS or warm nights during the Christmas holiday. Have I hit a nerve yet? Oh, some of you are not convinced. So how about a group that spreads joy simply by being together? There's that term, maturation beyond retirement. Oh, that's called aging. <laughs> and it's not always easy, so why not join the M&Ms, the Merry Mature Methodists? They work behind the scenes on many different projects. Or how about traveling together to see new and or unique places? Isaac has a group for you. It's called the History and Travel Group. Do you like to build and work with tools? Get involved with Christmas in April or volunteer to go on ASP. Could you join a supportive group like the UMM or the UMW or become part of the Secret Sister program through the UMW? What a joy knowing that someone is praying just for you on a daily basis and you don't even have to belong to the UMW. Why not join the Angel Gang? This is a group of dedicated members who not only pray for those on our prayer list, but go out to visit and bring joy to those who need it the most. And let's be honest, they serve dessert every Tuesday morning. Now that's a joy. And then there are those, like my husband, who like to work for many wives. Yes, you heard that correctly. Let me say it again. He likes to work for many wives. And we jokingly refer to his church wives. Sharon was one of them. We now have Shamika and Kristen and Carol and Jackie. And I'm sure there are others I don't know about, and that's OK. <laughs> they often call him to fix something that has gone awry here at the church. And trust me. I have learned that when it comes to getting something done at home, I simply call one of them and ask them to put it on their list. <laughs> there are many, many committees you can join, but here is the key. Be a cheerful giver in all ways. You don't need to limit yourself just to being joyful as a giver here at church. You can do that outside your church circle as well. Offer to pray for those who have expressed a need. 
Could you give your travel points or funds to defray the cost of an emergency travel? Or one that I hear often because I am blessed with multiple vehicles. My car is fill in the blank and could I borrow one of yours? Sure, it's not a problem. Let me check with Chuck to see which one's working this week. <laughs> I am here today as a cheerful giver to give you and your family something of value too. It's a plant for you to grow. I have picked and packaged a, an air plant leaf from my own plant. It used to be a bush. It's now cut down. This is a succulent plant that is native to Madagascar, and it has become a unique and common houseplant throughout the world. And as a former science teacher, I think of this as a wonderful way to bring your family together in a combined science experiment and spiritual adventure. So, growing it is very simple. You just take the leaf, put it flat on some soil, water it once a week, and that's it. So simple. After a few days, you will notice tiny little plantlets that are starting to grow in the notches on the leaf. Eventually, the mother plant does dry up, but it leaves you with lots of little plants that will root and grow, and then you too can give them away. This gift, however, comes with one condition, and that is that you pray every time you water it or you check on it. And to remind you of that, I've given you a little flag that says, pray, just stick it in the soil. And as you and your family check on it, say a little prayer. What you pray for doesn't matter to me. Pray for something that is important to you. Pray that you might know the joy in simply giving of yourself. Well, I see my time is merely up, and I know this not because I'm looking at a watch. I know this because my husband has a saying that goes like this. Some ministers talk longer than some members of the congregation can listen. <laughs> and from up here, I can honestly tell that some of you are kind of done listening, and it's those glazed eyes or the soft snoring I'm hearing, but actually I do want to thank Daniel and Chelsea for allowing me to have the chance to speak to you today. I've had a joyful experience up here in the pulpit, and you know, I can see why they like to be up here. And if I brought you a bit of happiness, I hope that you will carry that with you as you bring your gifts. <laughs> And I pray that each of us will always be a cheerful giver in whatever ways we can for as long as we can. For as the scripture says, each of you should give as you have made up your mind, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Thanks. I'll get it later.